Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Kansas Day celebration event on our lovely digital platform, since we all can't get together. My name is Julianne, and I am one of the educators here at the Lee Richardson Zoo in Garden City, Kansas. And today we are talking about all the different state symbols of Kansas. So every state has like a state flower and a state mammal and a state bird, all that good stuff. We are talking about the ones for Kansas today. And we have some really, really awesome animals to talk about. So first off, when you picture Kansas, what types of animals do you think of that live here? And these are three very common ones that we hear when we ask that question. Uh, a lot of people say, oh my gosh, the box turtles. That's my favorite reptile. We have the pronghorn antelope there in the middle. And of course, our lovely large bison friends out on the prairie in those grasslands. And these are just a few of the animals that live in our wonderful state. So first off, we gotta figure out where on earth is Kansas? And that answer is right here where the star is. So that star shows you where the state of Kansas is compared to the rest of the United States and North America. So that star is where our state is. Now for myself, I am in Garden City, Kansas at the Lee Richardson Zoo, and that is this star right here. So I know a lot of you joining us today are from different areas of Kansas. You might be from the western side of the state. And if you are from the western side, that's where I am. And it's a lot drier out here. We have a lot of those dry grassland areas. It's not quite a desert, but kind of getting close to one. You might also be on the eastern side of the state. And if you are, you're going to get a lot more rain than we do out here. Uh, you probably have more rivers and ponds and lakes, things like that. Um, so you get a little more rain, a little more water. It's a little bit more wet out where you are. And the grasslands are super special to our state. A lot of states do not have any grassland areas. I am from Ohio. Over there, we really didn't have much in the way of grasslands. We had farmlands, we had some hills, uh, but we didn't have these massive prairies. So for me, it's been really, really cool to come out here and see all these beautiful grasses hanging out in the wild. I think it's super awesome. So of course, we are talking about what our state symbols are. So to start, we are going to talk about our state flower. So many of you might recognize this picture right here. Of course, our state flower is the sunflower. Kansas is also known as the sunflower state. Now this sunflower, the wild sunflower, is probably a little bit different than the one most of us picture in our heads when we think of sunflowers. So usually you hear the word sunflower and you think of either the sunflower seeds that you eat or those giant, giant, beautiful yellow flowers that grow five, six, eight feet tall and stand way above my head. Um, the ones that people can grow in their gardens to kind of cover portions of their house um, or the fields of them that we use to get those sunflower seeds that we eat. So those are more of the agricultural sunflowers. These are the ones that people have grown to be bigger and better and awesome. The state sunflower of Kansas is the wild sunflower. So they are much smaller. They can still get up to two, three feet tall, um, but the flowers themselves are gonna be very much smaller. Um, they still have that beautiful yellow petal coming off and the big blackish brown center in the middle. They just don't get quite as massive as those giant sunflowers a lot of us picture. But again, this is our state flower, the sunflower. Of course, next we have our state insect, those lovely pollinators. Do any of you have a guess on what that state insect would be? If you said the bee, you are correct, but it is a very specific bee. Our state insect is the honey bee. And the honey bee has one of my favorite stories of all insects ever. So, fun fact for you, the honey bee is not even from Kansas. It's actually not from the United States at all. The honeybee originally comes from Europe, all the way across the ocean. So how on earth did the honeybee become the Kansas State insect? Well, way back when, before the settlers even came to North America, they had honeybees over there. And people realized, oh my gosh, they make this delicious stuff called honey. We like to put it in our tea, on our toast, make a bunch of different things out of it. 
we are going to kind of collect some honeybees, keep them together so that we can collect the honey from them. So they started farming honeybees to get the honey. Well, when the settlers started to come over, they were like, I don't want to leave my honey behind. Who knows if we're going to have any honeybees over there? So they brought some of the bees with them so that they could still have their honey while they were in North America. And once they got over here, the honeybees did awesome. They flourished. They are able to survive perfectly out here. They do really well. Um, you may even know someone who is a beekeeper and they have those big beehives that you can pull up the thing and has the honey on the sides. So those are what we use now to house our honeybees. And sometimes you might even find a few wild honeybees out there. So, but again, we have the question, how did they become our state insect? Well, that is because of students. So students were learning about how awesome bees are. They're pollinators. They keep the flowers healthy. They keep our crops healthy. They're super important. And so a bunch of students got together and wrote to our state government and said, honeybees are super important. They're really good for our flowers. We should make them our state insect. And the people in the state government were like, absolutely, you are correct. They're super important. We're going to make them our state insect. And that is how it happened. So I love that story because a little honeybee, not even from here, became the state insect. But it also shows how much of an impact us as individuals can have just by writing into some people. I think it's super cool. All righty. So we've discussed our state flower, the sunflower, the state insect, the honeybee. Next, we have our state bird. Do any of you recognize this bird? All right, you may have said the meadow lark, and if you did, you are exactly correct. The meadow lark is the state bird of Kansas, and this is a super special, awesome bird. So they have that bright yellow chest and belly, the black on their backs, and when you see them, all you see is this flash of yellow as they fly by you. They're really quick little birds, and they have a beautiful, very flute-like song uh, that just kind of drifts through the air as they are singing. Now, I say they're special because the name meadowlark means they're found in meadows. They like the grasslands. And so we don't, again, we don't have a lot of states that have grasslands. So not a lot of states have the meadowlark. Again, in Ohio, I had never seen a meadowlark before I moved out here. And I love getting to see them and hear them. Now, being in the grasslands in those prairie areas, that also means they don't like to be around a lot of people. So when I am in Garden City, around a, a lot of the people here, you don't see too many of the meadowlarks. But if I go just outside of the city and start getting more into the fields, they are everywhere. They are all around you. You can hear them calling, see those, again, flashes of yellow as they fly in front of you. And it's super, super cool to see. So again, the meadowlark is our state bird. And next we have our state amphibian. And some of you may have already said, it's a salamander, and you are, again, 100% correct. So the specific salamander that is our state amphibian is called the barred tiger salamander. And I have one of them here with me today at the zoo. Her name is Carmen, and we are going to get a nice close look at Miss Carmen here. All right, and here she is. So Carmen, once again, is a barred tiger salamander. They get their name because of their colors. So they have the black and the yellow, and that's kind of the color of tigers, right? So they have the color of tigers. Their stripes are also called bars. So barred tiger, and they are a salamander. So their name is a perfect description of exactly what they are and what they look like. Now, compared to other salamanders, you might be able to see compared to the size of my hand, She's pretty large. So these salamanders get pretty big. They're a little bit longer than my hand and pretty wide. So this is one of the larger salamanders that you will find out in the world. And around here, they are often underground because as an amphibian, their skin needs to stay wet. Their skin is what helps them to breathe and they can absorb things from the outside. So by being underground, that is where a lot of our water is, and they will just kind of hang out there. And when it rains, you might see them pop up to the surface and be walking around on top of the ground. And as it starts to dry out, they will dig themselves back under the ground where it's nice and safe, and they have some water left. So 
where I am on the western side of the state, we don't have a ton of these guys hanging around. We might see a couple. But for those of you who are on the eastern side of the state, it'll probably be much more common for you to see these salamanders. Alrighty, so some questions we often get is what do they eat? And our friends here, they love to eat bugs. They'll eat worms, they'll eat crickets. Um, they might even eat tiny little rodents. For her, she uh, will sometimes get very, very small mice to eat. Um, so they're very opportunistic. If something crawls in front of them, they're probably going to try to eat it. Um, but that is what they eat. They don't eat any plants at all, just all of those delicious bugs. I don't know if that's what I want for a snack, but that is one of her favorites. Another question that we sometimes get is, do they change color or do they always look the same? So they do not change color. Uh, very few animals in the world can actually change their colors. A lot of people often think of chameleons, that type of lizard that can change the colors of their body. Uh, but for them, they will always be that yellow and black. Now, individuals will actually have different patterns. So this striped or barred pattern that is on Miss Carmen here will not look exactly the same on every other barred tiger salamander. So that's part of how you can tell the individuals apart is by the pattern of their skin. All righty, so we are going to say goodbye to Miss Carmen. Once again, the barred tiger salamander which is the state amphibian of Kansas. And next, we are going to talk about our reptile friend. So I've already mentioned them once before in this program. Do any of you remember what our state reptile is? And if you said the box turtle, you are absolutely correct. More specifically, the ornate box turtle. A fun fact that a lot of people don't realize is that there are actually different types of box turtles in the world. Where I am from originally in Ohio, we had the Eastern box turtle. Around here, we have the ornate box turtle. Again, that is our state reptile. And you can also find the four-toed box turtle as well. Um, so, different types of box turtles, and they all look a little bit different, but have some similarities. So, here to meet all of you today is Smalls, and there we go. So, this is Smalls, one of our ornate box turtles here at the zoo. And I think these are super, super, super awesome and super cool animals. So as a box turtle, why they have their name, they have this line kind of on the bottom of their shell and that acts as a hinge. So if they get scared, they can actually pull their head and their legs all the way into their shell and close that hinge like a box. And that's what helps protect them. So very few turtles and tortoises can actually do this. Most of them cannot go completely inside their shell, but the box turtles can. So that's something really special about them. Now they get their name ornate box turtle is because they have a very ornate or a very complicated pattern on their back. So the color that you will often see is they're mostly brown with some yellow or on smalls here, it's a little bit more white on his head and neck. And then the yellow and brown pattern that is all over the back of their shell. Now, if you want to tell a male apart from a female, you can look at their eyes. So the males have a red eye, and that's what Smalls is. You can see his, you might be able to see his red eye on the camera. And females have a more brown or golden colored eye. Um, now, one question we often get is why do they have such long claws? And those claws help them dig. So they will kind of dig themselves a little burrow and go underneath the ground. And then during the winter time, they will sleep. So they are a type of animal that hibernates through the cold. And they'll go to sleep in their little burrow. It helps keep them safe and a little bit warmer when they're under the ground. And then as it starts to warm up outside, they will wake back up and continue looking for their food. Which brings us to the next question, what on earth do the box turtles eat? And this is another type of animal that loves eating bugs. They will eat worms and crickets and all these other things, but they will also eat some plants. They like some fruits and veggies like berries or here at the zoo, they might get squash every once in a while, things like that. So they get a wide variety of food. <clears throat> now for the box turtles, they are a type of turtle that cannot swim. So if you see one and you're trying to help it out, 
like maybe moving it off of a road so it's not going to get hit by a car. You do not want to put it into a big puddle or a pond because they're not very good at swimming. So make sure you're putting them down on dry land. But also, if you see a turtle just kind of wandering around on its own, you do not want to go over and try to pick them up. Uh, we want to give them their space because they are still wild animals. Smalls here has lived at the zoo for a very long time. He's really used to us, um, so he knows that people are not going to hurt him. However, the wild box turtles that you see outside, they do not know that. So we want to make sure that we're giving them plenty of space, but you can hang out and watch what they're doing, see if you can figure out what they're eating or where their home is and all that other awesome information that you can tell just by observing them. Alrighty, everyone. So we are going malls away. And we have one other type of animal that we are going to talk about as our last state symbol. And of course, that would be our state mammal. How many of you know what our state mammal is? I'm guessing a lot of you said bison, which is absolutely correct. So the Kansas state mammal is the bison. And these guys are massive animals, super, super cool to see out on the wide, flat prairies. They love eating grass. That's the main thing that they eat. So here I actually have a video of our bison here at the zoo. Um, and I'm just going to keep talking about them as we watch them roam around their yard here. So bison have all this wonderful thick brown fur. And the reason they have such thick fur is because, again, they live on those grasslands, on those prairies. There's not a lot of shelter out there. And in Kansas in the winter especially, it gets really cold and really, really windy. So they have that extra thick layer of fur to help keep them warm, like us putting on a winter coat. Now in this video here, you might see that uh, Sienna, our female, has these chunks of fur kind of almost falling off of her, hanging down from her body. And that is because this was taken when she was shedding. So as the year starts to get warmer, they don't wanna wear a winter coat in the summertime. So they will shed off that extra layer of fur. And it's kind of like us putting on a t-shirt when it gets hot out. So that is going to help keep them nice and cool even in the winter time. Alrighty, I'll play this video again just so we can continue watching them as they move around. I think they're super awesome animals to watch. Uh, but you'll notice towards the end of the video, they get some fruit. And this is a very, very exciting day for our bison. And it would be in the wild as well. If they find any fruit out on those open plains, that is an awesome day. That is a super special, awesome snack for them. So you can see how excited they get when they go up to the melons that they're eating. Um, but they are herbivores. They only eat plants. So again, mostly they're going to be munching on the grass. Um, but every once in a while, if they find some fruit, maybe some berries or like melons, things like that, they will absolutely eat that very happily. Again, it's kind of like a super special treat. Uh, a question we often get about the bison is, do their horns grow with them? Or how do those horns work? And that answer is yes, those horns grow with them all through their life. And I have an example of that right here. So this would be a bison horn. Now compared to the size of the animal, their horns really aren't that big, um, but it's probably a little bit easier to carry on their head. I think so. Um, so their horns are stay with them all the time. And that brings up a really good point about the difference between horns and antlers. So horns are always there. They never fall off. They never shed. They are made of bone um, and they just continue to grow like little by little every year. Uh, but they're not going to get much bigger than what this one is here that you see. For antlers, they regrow every year. And then at the end of each season, they fall off and they have to grow a new pair. So that's kind of the difference between horns and antlers. So antlers are the ones that you might find just on their own on the ground. Um, horns are going to stay on the animal for their entire lives. But the horns do grow with them, just like our bones grow with us. So again, bison are really, really large animals. And it's another one where I always tell people we definitely want to be respectful of their space. We don't want to just walk up to some wild bison if we see them just to try to get closer because they can be a little territorial. They like to protect 
their herd and their area. That's part of why they have those horns. Um, you can sometimes see males kind of headbutting against each other with those horns, um, and that would be their competition. Uh, that's kind of how they decide who's gonna be in charge in that area. Um, but they can do that for people if they feel a little bit threatened. So again, I always suggest stay away from wildlife, keep your space, but you can hang out at a respectful distance. And again, just observe, just watch, see what they are doing and try to learn from them as they are walking around. Alrighty, my friends. Well, that covers all of the Kansas state symbols. Everything from the state flower, the sunflower, the insect, our lovely honeybee, all the way up to our state mammal, the giant bison. I hope you all had a wonderful time with us today. Um, and one other question that we often get, do we have these animals here at the zoo that you can come visit? Absolutely, we do. In the FinUp Center of Conservation Education, so the education building here at the zoo, we have a whole Kansas hallway where you can see all the animals that you might find in your backyard. And out there you will find our barred tiger salamander and our box turtle friends, so you can come say hello to them. Also out in the zoo in our North America section, we have our two bison along with our elk and our pronghorn. So come on out, say hello to all of them and your favorite Kansas animals. We are open every day, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m totally free to walk through. So be sure to come visit us. We would love to see you. And if you have any questions, you are welcome to stop on in the Education Center, find one of us. We are happy to answer any questions that you have. You can also email us at zoo.education at gardencityks.us. We're happy to answer all those questions. We hope you have an awesome rest of your day and we hope to see you again in the future. Bye everyone.